What's happening, peeps and peeps? I hope you guys are having an awesome day. And if you don't, watching this video might might actually change that. So, <laughs> anyway, uh, besides uh, all the jokes and stuff like that, we are gonna do the review of this thing. Uh, this thing is a battle cruiser. Now there are three variants of this thing. Obviously, um, there are the Klingon Federation and the Romulans. If I can find it right here. Uh, as you guys can see, with the Federation we are going to cover today, uh, in later stage, I'm going to do the Klingon and the Romulan ones as well. So stay tuned for that. And the reason I'm actually doing this, because this is not a particular new ship, or at least new in the game. Uh, it's been out for, I think it's like, maybe two years, or maybe more, or maybe three, or something like that. And the reason why I'm actually doing this, because these, all of these ships have some really awesome... Um, mastery that I need to unlock. Uh, I actually didn't do anything about this here, but just I think I just bought it and just you know it stayed in the uh, uh, in the holding because I I never used it. You guys are probably gonna see it. The uh, the mastery is not even uh, not even used, so it's it's zero percent still. But anyway. Um, we're going to go through all of the information, the customization, the visuals, going to take this thing into battle and then you guys are going to see how awesome this ship is. So let's get to it. So here we go. We are going to read all of the information that Cryptic has provided us. A little bit of a backstory to uh, this ship. Now there is an Arbiter and also an Avenger class. Um, I kind of like the Avenger more than the Arbiter. But the Arbiter is how this thing is going to come out of the box. So we are going to do the Arbiter. Um, the Tier 6 Arbiter class battle cruiser is based upon the Adventure class battle cruiser's design. The upgraded uh, Starship was uh, designed from the ground up to be uh, durable enough to combat the Iconian threat while still be able to deliver punish uh, punishing amounts of damage. Okay. Uh, the starship features a lieutenant commander, a tactical slash intel specialist a seat. Uh, the Arbiter class battle cruiser comes equipped with an ablative hazard shield console. When active, uh, ablative uh, hazard shield grants a temporary secondary shields. Upon expiration, energy absorbed by the shield is shunned to shields, and the structural integrity field granting a large hole and a shield heal. All right, that sounds promising. Um, this console provides a passive boost to shield hardness and regeneration rate. Very cool, very nice. Uh, this console may upgrade to the any Starship Battlecruiser um, in any of their console slots, but you only may equip one of these consoles at any given time. So, upon reaching level 5 of your Arbiter Battlecruiser Starship Master, you will unlock the Emergency Weapon Cycle, uh, the Emergency Weapon Cycle Starship trait. While this trait is active, using emergency power to weapon will also reduce a weapon power cost and increase your weapon fire rate moderately. Now, um, the sole reason why I actually uh, am going to use this thing and level it all the way, uh, the Starship Mastery all the way to level 5, is this last part. This uh, Starship trait is really, uh, really, really, really important if you are... Uh, going after DPS in Star Trek Online. Um, this thing uh, reduces the weapon power cost. Usually, you know, when you're firing beams and stuff like that, usually it takes like 10 of your weapon power. Now this uh, reduces that by 50%, so it's only going to um, take 5 of your weapon power, uh, meaning you're going to deal out more DPS because your power levels are going to be higher. And also, uh, firing um, your weapon's firing rate, uh, the amount of um, uh, the, the, the cycle that it actually goes through when they're actually uh, firing off. Wow, this thing is a really cool engine or uh, deflector dish right here. Uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be faster. So you're going to fire more uh, beams faster. So, yeah. All right, so uh, this thing comes equipped with plus 10 to uh, weapon system, uh, subsystem, and also plus 10 to uh, engine subsystem. You can also load cannons up here, so dual cannons and stuff like that. And comes equipped with the universal console, the ablative hazard shieldings. All right, uh, console synergy 
can equipped console universal cloaking device found on the dreadnought cruiser and tactical escort retrofit wow this thing can actually cloak wow wow that's really awesome a federation ship that actually cloaks nice <laughs> anyway uh this is the battle cruiser package so absorption plating enhanced weapon banks uh enhanced plating armored hull and the emergency weapon cycle that is that starship trait that I'm looking forward to uh, using in my um, my DPS build that I'm actually doing. You guys probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, command cruiser arrays so for strategic maneuvering, shield frequency modulated, and a weapon system efficiency. All right, um, this thing has five consoles for tactical. Wow, that is crazy. Survivability, the survivability with this thing is a no. Um, a piece of cake to be honest is a no-brainer um tactical console slots four of them so you can definitely deal out a dps and one science just to i have no idea why but <laughs> there is a console slot for the science as well this thing has five weapons on the front three on the aft with a base hull of fifty thousand hit points i'm guessing at level 60 shield modifier of 1.0 1 point flat a base turn rate of nine degrees per second and it has room for three device slots wow okay now I'm going to make this thing my current starship, head over to the customization and see what kind of customization we can do on this ship. And then we are going to head off into space. Alright, so here we are at the customization part of this thing. It looks really cool. I like the design, even though it's like there are two versions of this. The Avenger is kind of like a little bit smaller. It kind of looks like a little bit like, like, the, um, like the Voyager design, right? Or maybe it's based upon that. Yeah, you guys are probably going to let me know in the comment section because you guys probably know a little bit more about this ship than I do. I just, you know, just grabbed it because I really want the trait. Yeah, but the Arbiter, that is the one that we are currently going to do the review on. Kind of looks weird, right? But I like it. It's like a good weird part. It is like a flat cruiser. But it's, yeah, I like it. It doesn't have that bulge like, you know, the normal uh, cruisers have. It's awesome. All right, so we don't have on, a unique interior. We just have the origin bridge. So um, there is no bridge tour about that. I do apologize, but it is what it is. And I'm just going to show off what Cryptic, um, Cryptic's design team is all about. Uh, so when they don't... Put up an interior there is no reason for me to do a bridge tour we do have a couple of different window types so we got type number one right here uh, we have the avenger and we have type number two and the avenger kind of looks cool right and we have type three two and three right here very nice and there's a type three and four and a four and fleet wow there is also a fleet version of the windows kind of like the fleet a little bit better though hmm the bluish is nice i'm gonna leave it at the bluish as it comes out of the box uh wow lots of material types we got the ooh. What was that? Oh my god. <gasps> oh my god, this thing is oh, this thing is beautiful. It's like matte black but like with a reflective reflective surface on top. Very nice. Wow, this is cool. Uh fleet why do I have fleet material? That's weird. Very nice. Underneath as well. Very cool. And actually see a little bit of bluish tint going on. Bluish theme. Very nice. Uh, we have type 1. 
not really liking type 1, to be honest. Hmm. Okay, moving on to type 2. Type 2 has a little bit of a, um, a darker surface. Hmm. Okay. All right, moving on to material type number three. It's a little bit older. <laughs> Very nice, I like it. It has a little bit of like, um, kind of looks like this thing has like aged a little bit. Has seen combat a lot in space. And is definitely in need of a, uh, a washing. Uh, ooh. Definitely love that part. Material type number four right there. Wow, very nice. Okay, moving on to five. Type five on your screen right here. Hmm. That's cool, that's cool. Definitely enjoy the reflection, even though it's a little bit too much on the sun and glare and stuff like that, but it's it's nice. It's not bad. We got type 6. Ooh, that is... Ooh, I'm loving the, um, the darker version of this thing when it's not hitting the sunlight. That is going to be a beautiful thing to see in space. Very nice. On the other side, very cool. Underneath as well, nice. All right, type seven. Uh, okay, so type seven is how this shim came uh, comes out of the box, and this is probably the one that I'm going to do the review on, because all the other ones are really beautiful, but that's not how the ship comes out of the box. Okay. Okay, so we got the upgraded version of these material types. Now, um, the upgraded and the veteran, you guys might not have those, because that is um, also part to my account, being like a lifetime member. Um, so if you guys are missing a couple of these material types, just making sure that you guys understand how it works. Very nice. All right, here we go with the uh, veteran. I definitely enjoy the veteran. Oh, more and more. Look at that beauty right there. Do you guys see these lights? These lights, the uh, lines right here with the blue. Wow. Very nice. Good job, cryptic team. Oh, and that big deflector dish. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really nice. Very cool. All right. Uh, obviously, we can like mismatch components, uh, change the the saucer hull and all of the uh, nacelles. Uh, mission pod. What is a mission pod? Oh, this upper part right here. Does this thing has like saucer or at least like a uh, separation thingy, a pet or something like that? That. This thing is like a thing. What is a mission pod? I never seen that one before. And also has a fleet logo. <laughs> Room for fleet logos. Anyway, um, let's take this thing in space and compare it to the Lucari science ship. Um, just to compare the size and how small or big this thing is in comparison to that ship. All right, so here we are in space. Um, I don't know. Uh, you guys can decide. Um, I mean, it doesn't look like it is much bigger than this one, than the science ship, I mean. It is, I would say, twice or something like that, you know, in its size-ish. 
in its profile, they're basically flat out the same, you know, the same height. So, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like, it is a battle cruiser. I mean, so it has to, um, you know, turning rate is not going to be that big on this thing. But it's like, in its size comparison, I'm like, yeah, it's basically the same, just like the Lucari ship. And like I said, it doesn't have, you know, the normal uh, cruiser, battle cruiser uh, hump <laughs> that you that you have up there. So that's nice in its size comparison. All right, let me just go uh, up here to the um, to that station up there and uh, start equipping all of the different visuals for you guys. So this is how it looks like out of the box. Um, I'm going to zoom in here just like that totally up in your face <laughs> and uh yeah if you open this or if you if you buy this thing out of the box you're uh this is what you're going to get this is how it looks like without any modification done to the visuals or anything like that all of the customization that you guys saw earlier i hit the cancel button so nothing has been applied to this ship this is how it looks like without any modification um that Doorbears, doorbell sound in Star Trek that you guys heard that is just somebody that um, is PMing me. Um, if you have your game up in the background, it's not you, it's me. <laughs> that usually works. All right. Um, we are going to start off with different visuals. We are going to start up with the adapted Mako visuals. Uh, I think it's this one. The adaptive Mako uh, deflector. Where is the engines? I think that was the engines and the visuals. There we go. This is how it looks like with the adapted visuals. Now you guys might see like you know engine trail lighting up. Uh, that has to do with a uh, or at least some kind of like sparks. That has to do with uh, a trait that I'm currently having active on my character. Uh, I believe it's uh, Pedal to the Metal. I, I believe it's the enhanced version or the upgraded version or anything like that. Uh, so whenever you're going to be in full impulse, you're going to get an extra DPS coming out of your ship. But that is not part of this ship. That is just a, a trait. This thing is... Uh, yeah, let me just zoom in. Um... You guys are here for the visuals, so let me just display all the visuals for you guys. All right, I'll turn this thing around. This is still the adapted Mako. Really awesome, because they actually did the uh, warp nacelles as well. Oh, that's really interesting to see all the other ones as well. All right, uh, let's do the Aegis visuals. Mm. Aegis, Aegis, more Aegis. All three pieces of the Aegis visuals. Oh, nice. You can actually see all of the... Um, enhancement that the visuals do or at least the uh the modification nice the engine trail is also cool even though it goes straight to the uh to the warp cells or this structure here <laughs> nice all right on the other side so you guys can see a little bit of a... Uh... Oh, I definitely enjoy the uh, deflector dish right there. It is definitely going to change color with all of the different visuals. That is something that I find really interesting. Look at that. That is cool. Very nice. All right. Next one is going to be the assimilated Borg visuals and the shields. Look at that. 
<clears throat> Huge deflector dish. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I don't like this part. The um, the deflector dish housing has a little bit of a clipping issues right here, or at least this part is not really being hidden very well in the ship. It's like sticking out. I do enjoy the modifications up here to the engines, though. That's really spot on. That's nice. <clears throat> And the uh, impulse modifier, or the uh, warp cell modifier, and the impulse modifier are definitely cool to see. You can actually see them like pulsating with the uh, technology of the Borg. Very nice. All right, next one is going to be the counter command visuals. I believe that is one, two, and is it this one? Yes. All three, woo! Oh, that is definitely a screenshot moment right there. That is so nice. I definitely enjoy this thing. Very nice to see this thing in action. Later on, we are definitely going to blow up. <laughs> because that's a visual too, you know, in in... When I'm going to cover the ship, I'm definitely going to cover the animation of blowing up as well. <laughs> Even though I don't think Iron uh, Cryptic has like different animation for a ship to blow. I think there is one generic and that's it. But the counter command visual is definitely awesome on this thing. It's a little bit just on the border of being too much. But it's just right on top. It's like uh, it's it's enough, but not too much. Definitely awesome on that. Definitely enjoying that part. You can see the um, the engine trail or engine wake from the counter command. You can actually see that. That's cool. Uh, the delta is going to be next. Where is, there is the Delta 1, Delta, uh, Delta, and Delta. Wow, okay. Wow, this thing totally changed. Look at that. Wow, okay. Did not expect this. I expected more of a, like, you know, just generic coloring of this thing but it looks beautiful wow okay look at that Bussard collectors have changed and the cells have changed in color that's nice okay let's flip this thing over oh very nice very nice you can actually see this thing has like two colors right here it's like normal you know did they actually did they actually change the colors of this thing? Okay, it looks very beautiful though. Yeah. I like it. Very very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Though even though <laughs> I'm not really fond of this particular visuals, I still enjoy it. Very nice. All right, next one is going to be the uh, Dyson. Engines and the visuals. Here we go with the Dyson visuals. Oh, tell me, isn't that a thing of beauty right there? That's... wow.
Also, guys, um, I'm going to take this opportunity to um, let you guys know that um, if you guys want me to cover a particular ship or do an update on a particular visuals, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, like, not, on, not only on this video, but on other videos as well. I'm going to comprise a list. And I'm going to see, like, if there is a particular ship that you guys want me to showcase the visuals. Because we have, you know, each year we have, like, I don't know, four or five different visuals that are added to the uh, to the entire system. So, um, if there is a lot of need for a particular, you know, visuals ship review, I can do that. Um, I mostly have, like, every ship in the game. So, uh, just let me know. Um, cause we have the Zenkethi, we have the Discovery, we have lots of new visuals to, uh, to cover the Lucari. It's definitely, uh, you know, a thing of beauty to be, uh, to be witnessed. So, um, even like, you know, maybe tier five ships as well. Just, uh, just saying there are a lot of visuals, uh, reviews on the channel, and if you guys, you know, um, happen to have a particular uh, need for a ship to for me to do a review on, just let me know in the comment section. If there if there are a lot of you guys up there wanting to have one of these reviews, can definitely do that. Um, let's do with the Iconians. Um, yeah, that one is the engine, and this one is uh, the uh, shields. Wow, nice. And this is the trait that I'm talking about, those those sparks that you guys see. <clears throat> that is not part of the ship, that is just part of a uh, of a trait that you can uh, have on or off on your particular character. And whenever you change ship, it basically comes up with your character. So when I changed my ship, it came up with this thing. But this is the uh, Iconian visuals that you guys are seeing. Nice, right? I like it. I definitely enjoy the visuals on this thing. Very beautiful. All right, let's flip it over. Now, this part I really don't enjoy because right here you have this big, awesome, really cool, dark version of this ship when it's like totally close to close to dark, um, dark and black colors. And you come over here and it's like brownish. Right. <laughs> and I'm talking about this part right here, not the uh, red color, but the brownish color It's like when it's facing the sunlight and it's being like, you know, being lit up, it's like, mm, what were you guys thinking? All right, let's move on to the Jem'Hadar version of the visuals. So we got engine or deflector engine and shields. Oh, nice. Speaking of the Jimidar, are you guys is uh, like enthusiastic about the new expansion that they're bringing up? Victory is life. My God, I hope they bring up like new visuals with that uh, some kind of space set, or maybe just a vanity shield. I don't mind. Even though I would love um, some kind of like space set for us to strive for and, you know, see what kind of like enhancement they're going to have. I don't mind, you know, uh, having a, a vanity shield as well from from the Jem'Hadar. Maybe some upgraded materials or, you know, some really badass looking, uh, <laughs> looking uh, visuals on top. On our ship. That would be awesome. That would definitely be awesome. I would definitely grab myself one of those. To show it for you guys. Anyway. Moving on to the new Kara. Is going to be next. Uh, this one. Where are you new Kara? Uh, this one. And the shields. 
Ooh, something's changed. Okay. This is like apparently a bug right here on this ship. Okay, so... Okay. So your status window need to be up for this ship. Because it's usually is like... Th can I... Can I really make it small? Can I make it smaller? No. Damn. Because it usually is like just like this. Because when I remove the um, uh, the status window, it changes the uh, the way the ship looks. So that's a little bit of a bug. Maybe they already know about it. Maybe they need to fix it. But this is how it looks like. And I really apologize for you guys not seeing the total... A ship. Oh, that deflector dish. Why is it white? Is that a bug as well? No, that's 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 the way it's supposed to be, I guess. Okay. Okay. Kind of looks like it's faded out <laughs> in this way when you remove the HUD. Is like it's like faded out. Hmm, that's weird. That is weird. Alright, the Omega is gonna be next. Uh, where is the Omega? This one is one, two, and uh, the visuals. Okay, we got the Omega visuals on the Arbiter Battlecruiser. Very nice. I'm liking this ship. Even though a little bit like pet peeve of mine is like when things are not um, being done really carefully. Like the way that these engine trail or engine animation warp trail or um, impulse trail is like working it's like not really suiting for the ship because it's like going all over the place but that just might be one of my pet peeves i don't know we'll let it go just for this once <laughs> all right Riemann. um one two three yeah see it should be like this. Maybe it has to do because I'm on triple. Maybe uh, maybe this bug, this visual bug has been solved already. Because what is that? <laughs> what is this? This is really weird. <laughs> but this is how it's... It's supposed to look like. This is just weird. This is this is nice though. I mean, without this part being like whitish, like we got new visuals for the Remans. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, moving on to the um, Riemann. So we had the Romulans. Engines, visuals. Let's see, does it? No, okay, good. Here we go with the Romulan visuals for you guys. Gives me the vibe that this thing is like... Oh, that is so cool. Gives me the vibe that this thing is like, I don't know, maybe like, you know, that you have like navy blue and stuff like that, those colors. This thing definitely looks like military green to me. You know, like this is like, oh, it's almost going to hit that station right here. I like it. Maybe just the visuals. I don't know how this ship is going to perform. And, you know, looking at the turning rate, 9 degrees per second is okay. 
I mean, basically a battle cruiser. So, even though it's an old, old ship, I think it is going to do a lot of DPS. If you if you know how to fly it, obviously. All right, um, temporal is going to be next. Let's see where are the temporal one. Uh, two and the visuals. Here we go. Temporal visuals on this thing. Ooh. It's like so colorful, right? Very colorful. All right, next one is going to be the Terran Terran visuals. Uh, is it this one? Yes, and uh, that one for the uh, shield visuals. Wow, look at that. And now it's shaking a little bit. <laughs> I think it's shy because it's on uh because the camera is on top of him. <laughs> if that's even a thing. I think from all of the um, space sets visuals that we equipped on this thing, I think this one is the most uh, suitable for this ship. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section which one is your favorite. I think this one is the most suitable uh, for this ship. Huh. All right, next one, we're going to have the Breen. Breen, where are your engines and the visuals? Yeah, this is the visuals. Oh, okay. So this one has the visual bug as well. Um, can I bring up this instead of that? No. Has to do it with this. Oh. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. <laughs> All right, so the Breen is, um, yeah, it's kind of looking good. I mean, in its design, the Breen is definitely like, I think it was the first visuals that we had. In this, uh, in this game. It kind of looks better with this bug, though. It's kind of like if it's like black and white without the colors. I like it. I like it. Don't don't fix this. <laughs> Leave it like that. Wow, that was that was definitely more appealing than the uh, than the other one. <laughs> All right, next one. Oh, wrong button. Next one is gonna be the Lucari. Let's see where the Lucari is. Is it that one? That is it. One, 
no, that's not it. Uh, this one and the Lucari visuals. Yeah, baby, look at that. Oh man, that is such a beautiful looking ship with all of these lines. Very nice animation from the deflector dish. <clears throat> oh, that transitional glow, that is awesome. <sighs> Ooh. Very nice. Now, the Lucari visuals is definitely more appealing when it's like um, on the darker side. So when it's not hitting the sunlight, like right now, it's like, mm, meh. <laughs> but when you turn it around, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, the prevailing regalia's visuals is going to be next. I think I have that one here. There it is. Now this one is from the competitive reputation. But you guys are also seeing the uh, information displayed on your top left screen whenever I change these visuals and also where you can obtain them. If you want to have uh, your own space set. That's how I roll, you guys. You guys know that. All the information displayed on your screen. No secrets when it comes to STO, right? <laughs> I'd love to share everything with you guys. Well, almost everything. What is up with these markings up here? What are that? What are those? Huh. That's weird. Never seen that one before. All right. So next is going to be the Bajoran visuals. Something that I really don't like. Oh. This one has a little bit of a... Uh, a visual book as well, but I kind of like it though. Are you guys seeing like this, these, these, these dots, this like aged thing? These scratches all over the place. I like it. Wow. Okay. Maybe this is just, you know, some kind of new visuals that is, uh, underway but not really gone through hmm interesting interesting oh look at that even the deflector dish is like you know it's like closed up somehow wow beautiful all right so that was the last visual or at least the space sets uh we have two uh, visuals that i'm going to display one is being the um okay that is weird this one is part of this. Do I have that twice? No. Anyway, um, one is the uh, Zenkethi visuals that is going to override all of the um, Bajoran visuals that you guys are seeing it right here. Wow. Man, I love the Zenkethi. These guys are really awesome. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful design. Loving it. Oh. 
and we do have another visuals or at least a uh, space visuals that are also going to display and those go are going to be the uh, the discovery and hopefully they're going to uh, make this ship a little bit more attractive because right now I just I'm just loving the uh, Zenkethi visuals but here we go with the uh, discovery of visuals I'm not saying anything. I'm gonna let you guys uh No, I just don't like it. <laughs> I just don't like it. The way that this thing has been set up with all of these markings up here, and there is no color and it's just like plain. There is no I mean, don't get me wrong, this definitely suits like this the Federation and their style of 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 ships and the way a ship should look like. It's definitely you know in that theme. Oh, definitely enjoying the deflector dish. That is nice. But uh all of the other ones is like mm, don't really enjoy it. And to be honest, I don't think I'm gonna use this ship a lot in 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 STO. I'm just you know I just grabbed it because I want I really want the trait, or at least I want to unlock the trait, <laughs> and then just you know just just have this thing because it's going to add to the collection. But that's that's basically it. All right, let's stop this thing. There we go. Um. All right, so. Just a little bit of a, a rundown of what this ship is all about. So we got five weapons on the front. Deflector, impulse, warp, and shield slot. That's just normal. We got three weapons on the aft. Room for three devices. For engineering, and that's basically for survivability, we have room for five engineering console slots. One for science to enhance our science. And we have room for a four a tactical console slot. So definitely an increasement for your DPS. Even though this thing has like eight weapon slots. Definitely going to deal out loads of um of DPS. Um uh, the Starship Mastery, we got level one plus 25 in physical and kinetic damage resist. Uh, level 2 plus 15 in critical severity, level 3 plus 25 engine, uh, no, uh, energy and radiation damage resistance rating, level 4 plus 10 in whole hit points, 10%, and this is basically why I want this thing, minus 50% in weapon power cost for the next 30 seconds, and plus 20% firing cycle haste for your energy based weapons for the next 30 seconds. And this is that unlockable starship trade that is called the emergency a weapon cycle. Um, we also have a, a, a universal console slot. More detail, or at least the uh, universal console that gives us the ablative hazard shielding that is going to provide us plus five in shield resistance and also improve the shield regeneration rate by 10%. Uh, so, target self with a two minute cooldown absorbed, uh, it's going to absorb 13,812.5 points of damage for the next 45 seconds, and upon expiration. When this thing is going to expire, it's going to give us uh, hit points, uh, 15,750 hit points to our hull, and 6,300 shield regeneration applied to each facing of our shields. Very nice. This is also part of a, a two-piece set. Uh, deadly maneuvers plus 50% to all uh, weapon damage and plus 33% in flight to turn rate. Now, I don't know where I'm going to get the variable auto targeting armament. This is probably something that I need to look it up, but might be interesting as well to utilize. Um, what else to show you guys? Oh, the Admiralty card. Let me first look that up. 
Here we go. We got Battle Cruiser tier 6. Uh, two stars in his rarity, so it's not really a good one to start off on the Admiralty. Um, 41 in engineering, 50 in tactical, and 17 in science with an 18 hour cooldown. That's basically all of the ships have an 18 hour cooldown, so there is nothing new to that. Special ability, minus 25% in maintenance per tactical ship. So if you equip this thing with probably some other ships in this um, in this mission or whatever you're going to slot it in, each tactical ship is going to have a reduction in minus 25% in maintenance. Uh, so that's that's definitely interesting to, uh, to use. Um... Okay, we covered everything. Uh, bridge officer stations. We have a lieutenant commander universal station. We have a lieutenant commander tactical slash intelligence station. We have an ensign tactical station. We have a commander engineering for survivability. And we have a lieutenant science station. Now, um, like I already said and mentioned in the uh, customization part, there is no unique bridge on this thing, so I'm not going to do a bridge tour, but I am going to take this thing into combat right now. So we are going to do Japori right here. Um, now, I didn't go like defensively. I went like offensively with this uh, particular ship. Uh, as you guys can see in my, uh, in my abilities. I'm gonna go for like the offensive build and hopefully my piloting skills are gonna be really cool because oh we got nice crits going on and we're doing really nice damage to these guys even though I'm just using you know the default stuff that comes equipped with this thing uh, phasers no enhancement mark 10s the only thing that I have enhanced is like you know the space set uh, alright something went I don't even have like whole healing and shield healing oh that's bad oh bad that's bad Okay, let's, uh, yeah, I'm going to die on this thing. And I'm actually, I'm actually using Ox to bat as well <laughs> on this particular build. And I went right through that. Okay, you guys want to follow me into this thing? Uh, where's my evasive maneuvers? Uh, yes, help me, Mr. Poseidon. <laughs> I really need to change that. Let me give us myself some whole healing. Uh, I don't need... I don't even have that. Yeah, I can't change that in mid-combat. Alright, so it is what it is. Heavy plasma torpedo on its way. Hit the other one. Hit this one. Oh, that's going to hit me as well. Okay, good. It didn't. Okay, so let me just give you guys a verdict right on this thing, uh, how it is. Um, you really do not need to be like overpowered to survive. Uh, I mean, look at look at my my particular build. Like, if I bring up my uh, my skills, they have not been allocated anywhere. So this is by far the most. Um, not enhanced uh, ship at all. It is just it. Oh man, this warp core breach is probably gonna kick my butt. Ooh, survived. All right. Um, and I'm only surviving because I have a couple of traits and stuff like that. Look, my shields are, or at least my hull is up. My shields are a little bit, you know, okay. They're not really the best, but. Only thing that's really important is, you know, how can you uh, how can you fly this thing? Your piloting skills are most important. As you guys saw, with eight uh, weapon slots, this thing can dish out lots of firepower. It's not really a big issue on you know those kind of stuff. Even survivability is not really being an issue because it is doing really good on GPS. So you guys, let me know. 
how you guys think that this sh this ship should be built because i think looking at this thing is definitely going to deal out crazy dps's because i don't even have like you know most of my skills on the or are on the offensive like radiation ox to bat more enhancement to the weapons you know everything is oriented by you know either drain or or kill there's no enhancement done to uh to survive or to heal our shields or hit points from our hull so i say this thing is definitely a beast um it costs about 3000 zen if you want to have it your for yourself um there is a pack if you want to have it on your Klingon and on your uh, Romulan as well for, for 6,000 Zen. If you want to have them like, you know, the entire set. And I should say this thing is definitely worth it. I mean, that trait is no brainer. The um, the Starship Mastery is no brainer to, to actually grab that. I'm actually amazed that I actually <laughs> spent that much time that, you know, that you guys know that I spent in Star Trek and I actually didn't actually grab that trait. So that's, you know, my biggest boo-boo. But if you guys are looking at this thing and it's like, well, I need like a battlecruiser, I could definitely recommend this thing because it's really good. Even though it's an old ship, it definitely performs, as you guys saw, performs really good. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. I hope you guys had a little bit of entertainment, knowledge, and um, yeah, just um, just a couple of laughs, I guess, <laughs> looking or at least hearing my uh, my rant about it. And I definitely would love to see you guys on the next video that is going to come out soon on my channel. Hope to see you there as well. For now, take care. Later.